Hello, my name is Andrea and today I'm going to show you how to animate a lip sync. A couple years ago, I made this little looping animation with this cute little bee character. And recently, I had an idea that would use this character again. Only this time, there's dialogue, so I'll need to do a lip sync. For the most part, lip shapes are repetitive, so the most efficient thing to do is to create a mouth chart a sort of library of lip shapes to select from in order to create your lip sync. The most simple would be a simple open and close, but generally we do a few more than that. You want a closed mouth for sure, an open mouth with closed teeth, a big open mouth for ah sounds, a wider one for e sounds, you also want one or two O mouth shapes, a bigger one and a little one, a mouth with the tongue up for L sounds, a biting lip mouth shape for the F or V sound. You can also do the ER shape. And finally, one for the TH sound where you bite your tongue. With this B, I wanted to keep it pretty simple. I didn't want him to have prominent teeth, so I only showed teeth when I absolutely have to, like the S noise and the F noise. I also simplified the TH mouth, so it's not that obvious that it's a biting tongue shape, but I think it still works. In order to test our mouth chart, we definitely need to have the voice recorded. So let's take a look at the script. Exterior, grassy field, day. A bee is flying happily. Oh, hello. I am a bee. I like flowers. The bee lands. Zoom out to reveal a human-sized shoe with a basketball next to it. And I have a basketball game tomorrow. Long pause. The bee laughs. Heh <laughs> just kidding. I don't play basketball. The bee flies away. Repeat from beginning. So that's my idea. Yep. And you know what? I'm proud of it. So when it comes to recording the voiceover, it's generally good practice to record every line several times so you can pick and choose your favorite. So here's me being a voice actor for a hot minute. Oh, hello. I am a bee. I like flowers. And I have a basketball game tomorrow. Oh, hello, I am a bee. I like flowers, and I have a basketball game tomorrow. Oh, hello, I am a bee. I like flowers, and I have a basketball game tomorrow. After listening to the different versions of the lines, this is what I ended up picking. Oh, hello, I am a bee. I like Flowers, and I have a basketball game tomorrow. Now let's plop that into a file and we can start our lip sync. You can set up your file in a way that makes it easy to tweak your mouth chart even after you have done your lip sync. Now I'm working in Flash and what you do is you make your mouth into a symbol. And inside that symbol, each frame is a different mouth shape. This creates a library of mouth shapes you can choose from when you're doing your lip sync. Now outside the symbol, you can start matching your lip shapes to the audio in the timeline. You can create a new keyframe and you can input the frame number for the mouth shape you need, or you can use the frame picker and select a mouth shape visually. Just make sure that you have it set to single frame. If it's on loop, it will cycle through all the frames starting with the one you selected. Now, when it comes to doing a lip sync, it's not quite as simple as just like going through and picking some mouth shapes and lining them up. You have to think about a few things. The first thing you should know is that not all sounds have mouth shapes. 
a lot of sounds just happen inside your mouth and you can't really see them from the outside. That's why you can do those lip reading videos where it looks like they're saying stuff that they're clearly not saying. But it, it looks the same because a lot of what makes you enunciate different sounds happens inside your mouth, not outside. A good way to figure out what sounds you can see and which sounds you can't see is, you know, look at a mirror and say the words into the mirror. It sounds simple. It, it, yeah, it's, it is simple. But you can screw yourself up because a lot of the time when you're trying to do something like figure out which mouth shapes to make, you accidentally exaggerate a bunch of sounds that don't really have mouth shapes. And then you add a bunch of mouth shapes in that you didn't need. And that's no good. So don't exaggerate. Just say it as normally as you possibly can. Now another thing you should keep in mind is the time difference between the sound and when you make a mouth shape. Now think about when you're talking. You might open your mouth and take a breath before you start speaking. Or just Sometimes you're preparing for that sound, so your mouth makes a shape. Now, broadly, I'd say you can bump forward your mouth shapes two frames before any of the sounds are made. That's like a general rule. And at the same time, your mouth will often stay open after the sounds have finished. But, you know, play it by ear. See what looks right, see what doesn't. It's you know, you gotta practice. It's one of those things. You just have to try it, see how it goes, play it in real time. If you're having a lot of trouble, you can always make yourself some reference, record yourself saying something, and then like analyze it and, and figure out like this frame is where you can see the mouth open, but this frame is when you can hear the noise. Okay, that's, that's the difference. Good, good knowledge right there. Now at this point, after doing some of the lip sync, I wasn't really happy with how the cheeks were moving. I felt that it was kind of jarring. It didn't look right. But luckily, using this method, I could just go into my library and fix the cheeks wherever I thought they were a little weird, and then it would just fix it for every keyframe. It saves me so much time, you don't know. <laughs> or you might know, if you did it the long way. Also, imagine if you were doing this for someone else, and you have already done the lip sync, and then suddenly they decide that they want to change how the mouth looks, and they want a whole new mouth chart and everything, and it's just like, you know, one of those you want to kill yourself moments. But if you've done it this way, oh, it saves you so much time. <laughs> I mean, without this method, you don't know how many animators would probably have murdered their clients. I mean, working smart prevents murder. That's just a fact. We just have a whole bunch of animators in jail right now because of all the murder that would be happening. Now, around here, I'm finished the lip sync, so let's, let's take a look. Oh, hello. I am a bee. I like flowers. And I have a basketball game tomorrow. You notice that I haven't done any of the other animation? And that is actually a way that it is done. Often the uh, character motions are separate from the lip sync. They, this lip sync artist is a different person. So with this animation, after the fact, I add in all the motion and everything. I just have the entire lip sync timeline inside a symbol. So as I move the character around, the lip sync just plays the way it's supposed to. If it's not already in a symbol and you want to make it a symbol, the easiest way to do that, I find, is you just make a blob and convert the blob into a symbol. Then you copy your layers, click into your blob symbol, and paste your layers there. You might need to move your symbol around to line it up, but it's easy enough. 
Oh, and don't forget to delete that blob. So now I'm just going to finish up this animation in a montage. Oh, hello. I am a bee. I like flowers. And I have a basketball game tomorrow. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't play basketball. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit that like button. You know, subscribe or something. It, it, you can get that bell thing. I hear it does something. Um, yeah. And uh, I hope you learned something. Thanks so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.